Hello everyone, in anticipation of the upcoming re-release of Death Smiles 1 and 2 on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch by City Connection, let us all pray for a quality port free of input lag and all the other issues that the City Connection ports seem to be having lately. I decided to do a commentary video for a rank 3 or level 3 1 CC clear with Rosa. And so if you're playing the game, you can see when you first select the stages, you can choose between level 1, level 2, and level 3. These are basically the difficulty modes of each level, and once you go to the highest level, I don't think you can go back. And I'm not sure if this is exactly the hardest mode of the game, or if you go into dip switches, you can change them. But normally the way it works is when people play cave games, especially for score, they tend to just stick with the regular dip switches and then use the modes, rather than going in and changing the dip switches within the menu and all that sort of stuff. And so for all intents and purposes, this is the most difficult mode of the game that most people tend to play. And while I'm not going to be playing it for scores, so don't look for scoring tips throughout this run, I will do my best to break down a lot of survival strategies. This actually isn't the very first rank 3 clear of Death Smiles that I've ever had. I had one on the Steam port and I actually made a commentary of that, but that was before I did the commentary on video and also I think I've learned a little bit about Death Smiles since then and also I just wanted to present this to people who haven't seen the previous video in a more compact fashion because I was trying to also review the game as I was uh, commentating it, which can be a little bit tricky. But this time around, I'm just going to try my best to give you tips on what to do. So when it comes to the three characters, Rosa is definitely my favorite. Not just because I think she's the kind of least cringe or the least creepy of the three characters. You know, being close to an adult at least. But also because I actually really like her play style and she does seem pretty damn powerful. Um, she's a little bit tricky because... She, rever she works in reverse than what you'd normally expect. So when it comes to playing Death Smiles, especially when you get into the later stages, not so much early on, it is all about controlling this option and controlling it really accurately. And I'll talk more about some specific strategies you can do as we go on. But when it comes to Rosa, the way it works is that when you are using your rapid shot, the option stays still. Like uh, you're able to control it more con you're able to get it to hold still and move it around like in Gradius or something like that. It locks into place. But when you're holding concentrated shot, that's when it starts to spin around you. And that's when you're able to move and adjust it. So a lot of the play style of this game, whether you're playing Rosa or the other characters, has to do with being able to maneuver your option just where it needs to be. But because Rosa tends to uh, happen when you're in concentrated fire, it actually can make some of the boss fights and things like that a bit more difficult because you have to not only try and fight the boss but also try and manage where your option is and so coming into the game I also have a very preset route when it comes to survival and I think it is a very useful route so you begin in the woods because you want to fight the wood you want to fight the harder stages early because as you get further in the game the rank will begin to increase and that's when you start to see stuff like suicide bullets and you don't want suicide bullets in the forest stage or in this canyon stage or volcano stage. I think it is not canyon. But what's also great about this stage is you can rack up a ton of score. And there's actually a hyper bomb reset strategy you can do where you can pretty much hyper your way through the entire stage. And then with a strategic bomb, regain all your hyper and then just continue to hyper through the rest of the stage. And you get a ton of score. But unfortunately, I sort of forgot how that technique went. So I just went with a sort of more straightforward hyper strategy here. But the thing to keep in mind when it comes to hypering in this game that is really important to know, though it isn't totally obvious, is that when you are hypering, you are invulnerable to physical objects damaging you. And this comes in handy a lot in the final stage as well, but also this stage. So you see these rocks that I'm flying into and killing? It's not only that my... Um, shot is really powerful and it's canceling them before they hit me but they also just don't hurt me when you're in hyper mode bullets will still hurt you you're not totally invincible but flying physical objects whether it's enemies whether it's rocks or things like that those things will not harm you and already you see that I took some damage from that stupid frog and what's interesting about death smiles that is actually really cool is the way the damage system works the way the health system works uh, you can kind of see something like it in Guange, but basically the way it works is when you take physical damage, so like that frog jumping on top of me, that doesn't take an entire bar. 
Instead, it just takes half your bar. And as you go along, if you're playing really well, you can regain that health separately than regaining an extend. At least that's how I believe it works. But on top, so even though I took that bit of health, um, it wasn't a reset because I know, okay, if I just play well, I can get a health item that will recover it, but won't affect my overall extend count. However, if you take a full bar of damage, that's basically just losing an extend and you have to regain that with an extend item. You can't get it with a health item. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that I don't know exactly how this works, but if you just get clipped by a bullet just a little bit, you tend to only lose half a bar. Whether, if you, whether when you get hit full on, that's when you can lose the entire bar. And I think what I was able to do here is when it comes to the difficulty curve of Death Smiles, the final stage is this massive, massive spike in difficulty. So basically, when it comes to routing, you want to learn to no miss pretty much the entire game if you can until the final stage because that final stage is a gauntlet of energy and resources and damage and it's just an absolute beast and so if you're coming into that final stage with one or two health bars you're going to be having a really rough time unless you're just you know extremely good at death smile but for me what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to basically get through the entire game without taking any damage i'm being a little bit loose with my bomb usage as you can see right there i could have tried to dodge out that pattern but i thought all right let's just do a nice safe bomb and Death Smiles is fairly generous with the amount of bombs that it gives you in comparison to some other cave shmups. So that is nice. So then we go into Port Town. And I think it would be nice to be able to save this to later. But the game forces you to go to Port Town with this round. You don't really have a choice. And this is the um, stage that most people tend to begin with. Because it's just the default beginning stage. And it's one of the easier stages in the game. But the strategy is to save it as far as you can. That way, as your rank goes up, you're still playing on an easier stage. That's a pretty clever trick you can use in a lot of shmups when it comes to having optional stage selects. Is you try to take out the difficult stages first and then the easier stages later. Whether because of rank or whether just because of reset syndrome. That's just a smart way to go about it. And I think this sometimes can break certain games like blazing chrome you're able to go to basically the final stage or one of the final stages uh right at the start and that's actually really really useful and a huge advantage over trying to play it later on in your routing same thing with death smiles as you'll see here so the thing about uh death smiles that i also really appreciate that you need to get a handle on when you're learning the game that's a bit of a learning curve is the control system and the fact that you're able to shoot both left and right I personally feel like this is a mechanic that should have been a little bit more common or a little bit more standard in horizontal shmups because I think it just really opens up the game design a lot when it comes to playing horizontal games. As many of you may or may not be aware, I tend to not like horizontal shmups nearly as much as vertical shmups. And I will say that my favorite horizontal shmup is easily Death Smiles. And one of the reasons is I just really love the style and the gameplay and you know the presentation and it's just you know cave goodness but also another big reason why is because i really like the level design where they have you able to turn left and right and there are other really cool horizontal shmups that have similar mechanics like rolling gunner where you can you don't turn left and right but you're able to flip around your rolling gun and shoot in all these different directions but i think even still uh the being able to fully turn around I just think that really adds a really fun dynamic and makes the game uh, the way the stages lay out a lot more interesting and so you're not always like hugging the back corner or trying to get around a bunch of obstacles. I just think it really opens up the genre a lot and I hope to see more horizontal shmups just doing this from now on. The problem with it though is that it can kind of make your control scheme especially if you're going for the whole concentrated rapid shot like you get in Death Smiles. Plus all the other controls you have in Smiles. It can make your control scheme, control scheme kind of complicated. And I will say of all shmups, I think Death Smiles is one of the most complicated shmups when it comes to your control scheme. Because I pretty much use all 8 buttons or 7 of the 8 buttons that I have on my arcade stick. The way it works is I have on the top row, I have just shooting right and rapid shot like you would in a regular shmup. So if you hold, you know... 2p basically you're doing your rapid shot you hold 1p you're doing your concentrated shot and then the way i do it is i do the left side controls on the same 
layout, but on the bottom. So 2K is my left rapid, 1K is my concentrated uh, left shot. And then I put bomb on 3P. And the reason I do that is um, it isn't necessarily the most accessible, but it's as accessible as you're going to get without having to swap out your uh, bottom two buttons, which I think having them be laid out similarly to the top two is really helpful for making your controls make more sense in more, make more sense intuitively. And then on the very bottom right corner, so 4K basically, that's where I put my hyper button. And the reason I do that is because even though 4K seems really out of the way, you can sort of use the palm of your hand to activate that fairly reliably. And then from there, I can't even remember where I put the lock on button. And the weird thing about Rosa that makes her tricky is that she has to be facing the opposite direction of her lock on. And let me tell you, that's bit me in the ass in a number of boss fights, including the final boss fight from time to time. But yeah, that's the way she works is if you want to lock onto things, you have to turn in the opposite direction. And I think you have macro, not macro, but you have button combinations where you can have this happen. Like I think if you press three of the shot buttons or something, you can get lock on to work. Same thing with uh, hyper. I can't remember the manual way to do this because obviously on the arcade cabinet, they don't have an eight button setup. But I would say just go ahead and bind them to individual buttons. Um, if you're so inclined because that tends to be a little bit more reliable than trying to use the button combinations because sometimes I've noticed on the button combinations it takes a while for it to register or for it to click or there's some kind of buffer I don't know what it is but I think using the individual button shortcuts is really really useful so now we go into Lakeshore a pretty iconic stage of the game because the final boss which is the cow but also just the background is really cool the soundtrack is really awesome and look now we're playing uh, rank three level three because here are the suicide bullets and so the name of the game is all about keeping that option ahead of you and being able to maneuver it very precisely while also using your concentrated shot and there's some mechanics you can do this one is of course just to very very gradually tap dodge and all that but the main sort of trick to do this is you have this sort of rhythm that you activate your concentrated shot because it takes a few frames or whatever for your concentrated shot to be registered and then it takes a few more frames for it to move your ferry or move your option so what you want to do is you want to activate it enough to get the concentrated out but then you release it before the ferry moves you do this all the time especially in stage five it's or the final stage is pretty damn critical and so even in this stage whenever you start getting the suicide bullets involved see i'm doing it now you notice I'm concentrated and I'm sort of moving around and yet my ferry isn't moving exactly along with me as you'd expect and it's because I'm doing this sort of rhythm buffer to be able to get the concentrated fire to come out but releasing before the ferry actually moves and it'll move a little bit but you just want to get the rhythm as tight as you can so that it just moves a minimal amount and then being able to control that on the fly is really one of the main skills of the game especially later on in the stages and what makes playing death miles really really fun in my opinion um because it does feel awesome to be able to get all these bullet cancels and able to get through these massive waves of suicide bullets without taking damage in a way that you couldn't really do if you didn't have the whole option system and so taking out the cow here i think i've used the bomb on it and the cow is actually a pretty easy boss had I played a little bit more strategically, I wouldn't have had to use the bomb, but I sort of forgot the patterns of the cows. I was like, oh, screw it, let's just bomb it and move on. The boss fights in the early stages before the final stage are pretty easy, to be honest. Even on level three, they're not that bad. And here we come into the swamp. You can see these earlier stages, they just fly by. They're really not that long. This Smiles is really interesting because if you want to get into the longer, more challenging stages, they are the optional last stages before the um, castle or whatever it's called. And I didn't end up doing that. Canyon's one of them. I can't remember the other one. It's like Ice Palace or something. I didn't end up doing that just because I'd have to learn those stages and everything. And I was just going for a basic clear. I wasn't going for score play. Though in the future, I do want to play Death Miles for score because it is pretty cool game scoring wise. It's just really complicated, at least for me. 
when I sit down and read the scoring strategy guide for the game, I'm like, oh my gosh. Because it involves items and hyper skulls and letting skulls bounce and all this sort of stuff. And so I haven't really learned the scoring system of the game all that well, but I have gotten pretty slick at the survival aspects of it. Another thing that's really cool about the option is you can basically park it on your enemies and just point blank the crap out of them. That's very useful in the final stage. Uh, got my hyper here, get a nice cancel. And remember, now that I'm in hyper, I can run into enemies. I can't run into bullets, but I can run into enemies. So you don't have to worry about enemies spawning on top of you. That is one thing about Death Smile's level design you need to be aware of is uh, it is not shy about spawning enemies on top of you. So you have to be uh, mostly in middle of the screen as much as you can if you don't know what's coming, of course. Because otherwise you're going to have a boss just appear on top of your head if you're hugging the corners all that often. Plus the game tends to punish you for hugging the corners. And that's another thing about horizontal shmup design that is a little bit of a challenge if you don't have the ability to turn left and right, which is it just tends to be really advantageous in a lot of horizontal shmups to hang out on the back of the screen, more so than vertical shmups just because of the way it seems to be designed. And also you just have more screen to try and control in horizontal shmups. And yet horizontal shmups, especially old school ones like our type and all those, tend to not give you super wide shots. So it's actually a very different uh, game feel than to playing stuff like Death Miles where uh, not only are you able to turn left and right, but you also have a pretty massive shot as far as screen coverage. And then also with Rosa, your fairy homes in. I tried to get real cute with that pattern and ended up getting absolutely destroyed, unfortunately. So I did not realize my ambition of no missing all the way into castle, but I had been practicing castle for hours just before this. So I was feeling confident as long as I had a clean run in the beginning of castle, I should be completely fine. So here we go. Here is the big difficulty spike where basically what's going to happen if you're playing Death Miles on this level for the first time. You're going to come into castle feeling like, yeah, this isn't so bad. I got this. I didn't have a whole lot of trouble, actually, the first time I played level 3 or rank 3. I didn't go through it perfectly, but I remember not having too much trouble and thinking, oh, this isn't so bad. And then you get into Hades Castle. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Hades Castle at the end. And you get absolutely demolished because not only is the stage way longer than the other stages, but it's also just harder the entire time it has a lot of very specific setups you need to know including this beginning section here the beginning is actually pretty damn challenging so what you need to do is you need to take out these grim reapers the big ones asap because otherwise you're going to get cornered and you're going to get stuff spawning on top of you and you also need to do some really uh pretty precise uh side switching as far as left to right left to right you need to make sure to be able to time that just right otherwise you're not going to get enough damage in on the grim reapers and you're going to get cornered and that's going to be that or you're not going to be able to get enough screen coverage to let the little grim reapers not run you over and damage you so uh yeah both are a very fine balance to get then you want to go around here this is all about controlling that option otherwise this section is going to be pretty much impossible for you to get through without doing a bunch of bombing and stuff because you just need to eat a lot of suicide bullets coming up here. And if you don't know how to precisely control your ship with that trick that I talked about, where again, you have a rhythm where you activate it and then let off before your ship move or before your option moves too much. If you don't know about that trick, you're going to have a real tough time with Rosa. I think some of the other characters, their options are a little bit easier to control because it's reversed where if you're in concentrated, it locks. Then if you're in rapid, it's more free roaming. Rosa, it's the reverse of that, which um, isn't as intuitive, but it is kind of cool. Nonetheless, it is kind of fun to play that way. And also, she's just really strong character, so it's not like you're not rewarded for learning how to manage her and everything. And in fact, when I play Black, Make a Black Label, which this replay is just regular arcade version, Make a Black Label has the extra character, the, the witch girl, and she tends to be just OP in my opinion or she seems pretty freaking OP where she has two options and it's much much easier to absorb stuff she does she seems to do a ton of damage not really have any fall uh, problems and then her options are also easier control because they're not reversed like Rosa's 
even still, I kind of still prefer playing Rosa over her just because she seems more fun to play. And so, yeah, as far as recommending characters, Rosa is definitely my favorite. I always played the other ones for a little bit. And I'm like, eh, nah, <laughs> I don't feel the need. Although I am looking forward to the port because from what I understand, the upcoming re-release is going to include some new DLC characters or something. At least that's what I heard. I thought that would actually be a really cool idea as long as they don't completely blow it as far as the technical performance of the game or not making the DLC characters absolutely ridiculous, either way too weak or OP. But if they could really add some balanced DLC characters, I could think that would go a long way towards making the game or the, the re-release worthwhile. So here we go. This is one of the hardest sections of the stage, if not the hardest section of the stage, where you have to get around these absolutely troll uh, pitchfork guy, centaur type things at the bottom where they spin their scythes, I believe they are, pitchforks, whatever it is, and just unleash massive waves. But it's hard to get down there to stop them from doing so because of all the suicide bullets. Same thing with these guys. Basically, what you want to do is you want to kill them, and then you want to slowly move upward, up and around all the suicide bullets with your option. But you, as you see there, a lot of them will slip right through. Luckily, I was able to just hold down and pass by, though it was a very close dodge. A clutch bomb there. I decided, okay, I need to be more uh, aggressive with my bombing or less hesitant with my bombing. Because what I was doing was I was losing runs to stage 5. Not because I didn't know how to play it or anything, but because I was sort of being stubborn about not bombing. And then I ended up uh, taking way more damage and health than was necessary. Of course, if you're really good at the game, you don't ever need to bomb because you can just uh, route your way around everything. And of course, uh, that, you know, just use your skill to get through. But at the same time, uh, stage five is really, really difficult. And the game, if you're just playing for survival, is pretty generous with bombs. And also, you don't really want to use that many bombs on the final boss. They're not, they're useful on his second phase, but on his first phase, you don't want to use them because of the hidden extend. So bombs are not as uh, crucial going into the final boss as they are in some cave games like Hibachi, where you absolutely need bombs. Otherwise, you're just going to die because of the, the way the patterns work for the most part. So here we go, some really clutch dodges here, some really clutch uh, use of my option. I remember feeling really confident right now coming into this section of the gameplay because I thought, okay, I'm basically just beasting through stage five. Not a lot of deaths. Yes, I'm using bombs, but that's all right. I'm just using them for safety for the most part. And I don't think I choke in this section here. We'll, we'll see. I kind of forget if I do or not. Uh, I think I do there. That looks like a joke. Did I, did I dodge that? I can't, I can't even tell if I dodged that or not. I think I did, which would be pretty, pretty cool. Oh, okay, I took the hit. I knew I took a hit in this section somewhere. I just can't remember exactly where. So not the best as far as my uh, extends, though not the worst either. Just kind of an average sort of attempt here where I'm going to have to play really, really well. The story, though, in my head is I need to get a hyper. I need to get a hyper before the boss. That is absolutely critical. That is the most critical thing. And luckily, these statues here give you a bunch of really easy to absorb suicide bolts. There we go. And there's my hyper. That's the 1000 in the bottom left corner, if you're curious. So I need to hold this, though. Do not use the hyper. If I had to use a resource, use the bomb. Because you absolutely need this hyper for this boss fight right here. Because the reason why is if you don't have a hyper and you try to no miss no bomb him then what ends up happening is you have to fight your way through these really really difficult uh bullet patterns at the end but if you decide okay i'm just gonna bomb spam him and get through him like that you can but then you miss out on the hidden extend or the hidden double extend or something so you don't want to do that so what you want to do is you want to come into this fight with full hyper Get through this pattern here and then start hyper in his butt and try and lay in a bunch of damage to prevent him from going into those later patterns which are way more difficult than this one here even though this one does look kind of intimidating at times and this is a boss fight where playing on the 360 port just feels so much better because the 
slow down on the steam port is kind of all over the place and a little bit funky. So here we go here. Activate the hyper. Those are the sperm bullets. I don't care what anyone says and I guarantee you it was intentional on Cave's part to make those bullets look like sperm. I don't care what anyone says. So right here, I tried this section here. This is one of the harder patterns. I tried at first doing the lock-on shot against it, but I found that the lock-on shot wasn't all that effective and you kind of needed the faster movement speed to get around his patterns. So I thought, oh, so you just use concentrated shot and you try and line yourself up where I'm point blanking him here. Strategic damage. So that, that was a really cool strategy I used in my last rank three clear where you ram into him rather than ramming into a bullet. So since he's a physical object, you take damage, but you only take half a bar. You don't take a full bar. But what's cool is that it gives you a bunch of invulnerability so that the strategy there is you intentionally ram into him, take the damage, but you only lose half a bar rather than a full bar, and then point blank the crap out of him and uh, kill him, which I was able to do. And then once I was able to do that, you see I got those extends. Had I used a bomb, I wouldn't have got him, but I did. Now we're sitting on easy street because what's really nice about Death Smiles is that in between deaths, you regain three bombs. And that may seem obvious, but in some cave games like DOJ, you only gain one bomb or uh, I could see a scenario. I feel like there's games. I can't remember which ones though, where you don't regain bombs. Oh, Grega. Yeah, Grega, you gain one bomb, for example. You don't gain three, but Death Smiles is generous. Death Smiles is kind, so you gain three and you can basically bomb spam the crap out of this boss. That that pattern there where it has the boxes or whatever is one of the harder patterns. What you kind of need to do, though it is pretty tricky with Rosa, is you need to place your option in front of you, but then you need to turn around and face the opposite direction and then just very strategically tap the fire buttons so it holds those blocks back. Because if you just shoot them straight up, there's suicide bullets or something like that. I can't remember exactly what they do, but they kill you basically. So I just bomb my way through that section rather than dealing with it. This section here, until you know about targeting magic, like the first time you play, you may not be aware of this ability called targeting magic. If you're not aware of that, you're just going to get destroyed on that pattern. I remember for a long time practicing it thinking, okay, how are you supposed to dodge this stupid pattern? Then I watched the replay and someone just cakes through it with targeting magic and I thought, oh, okay. This section here, I'm just going to bomb spam because it's kind of a crazy pattern. Uh, there we go. And that is that. Uh, unfortunately, because I played so well in stage five, it wasn't as uh, dramatic, the ending, because I still had a crap load of resources. But I think this is a much more solid playthrough than my first. So... Uh, yeah, I definitely recommend Death Smiles on the 360. Hopefully, we see a quality port come out on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch because I think the game deserves it. And it would be nice to play it on the Switch because the Switch is more suited to horizontal shmups than vertical shmups, in my opinion. I have a whole video about this. And so being able to play it in handheld mode on the Switch with hopefully responsive inputs and not a pile of input lag, uh, I'd be willing to... Uh, buy it twice on the PS4 and on the Switch just for that reason. The thing that I'm nervous about though and the thing that is really tricky to communicate is that since this game already has two ports, both of them pretty good. The 360 port is the best and then there's the Steam port which has its issues but mostly with slowdown accuracy but still really solid. What I'm worried about is that when it comes to the PS4 and Nintendo Switch I'm going to have to review them and it's City Connection and they're going to be laggy. And then I'm going to have to do this negative review of my favorite horizontal shmup where I'm like trying. This is something that's really tricky about doing reviews of ports is that a lot of times the game that I'm reviewing, like in the case of the Psycho Collection, I really like those games. But people don't understand that my when it's a port, I'm mostly basing my opinion, unless it's like a really exclusive port or something really basing my opinion on how well it is ported, how faithful it is, especially when you have alternatives. In the case of Death Smiles, you have a ton of different alternatives, well, two alternatives and then MAME, but 
you know, it runs pretty well in Groovy Mame, and you can get the accuracy fairly good. And actually, did a lot of practice in Groovy Mame originally to get my rank three clear because it had safe states and everything. So it runs pretty well in Groovy Mame, to be honest. Not perfectly, but pretty well. And then it runs on the 360 really well, and then it runs on the Steam version really well. So it has options. So when the PS4 port comes out, if it has like six frames of input lag, for me that's going to be a problem because you can have you have two very responsive ports. It plays fairly responsive, responsively in low latency mame or groovy mame. So hopefully they get it right and they save us all a bit of trouble because I would love to play this more, especially if they add the DLC characters and they're actually really cool. And I am a little bit curious if there's going to be any changes in the presentation of the game as far as maybe um, improvement to the graphics a little bit. Not like amazingly, but like a little bit of improvement to the graphics or improvement to different uh, modes. Like the training mode is cool, but the training mode doesn't have a boss select, which is a huge oversight. So when you're going to practice the final boss, you have to play your way all the way through stage five every single time which is really brutal and the, another reason why i haven't really picked up the extra stages because basically if i want to practice those especially the bosses on those i'm probably going to have to do it in groovy mame rather than on the port so hopefully the new port will fix this problem by adding boss select into this uh practice mode so yeah thanks so much for tuning in i hope you all enjoyed my little commentary of death smiles my favorite horizontal shmup and one of my favorite shmups and uh, keep an eye out for my review of the port coming up in December because I'm going to give you no holes bar in-depth 100% honest review you know no cognitive dissonance involved here even though I want the game to be good if it isn't I will tell you if it is or isn't so thanks so much adios everyone so thank you to the $5 patrons, 100 100, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Danielle Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Staslea, DJ420, Praise It, Dubs, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric, Don Maku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Matthew Eversviller, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Shane Sintiansky, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Old Bensta, TRM, Zugumo, Plasmo, Twilight EX, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.